Jets. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. We are streaming, everybody. Hi, Internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, um, Ralph, if you want to go ahead and open us up, I am ready to rock and roll. Let's do it. All right. Welcome, everyone, to tonight's stream. We are welcome everyone to cybersecurity and we have an all-star panel lined up for you we have socks we have ashley and me i am your host tech coach ralph and um i mean you know, I'm, we're going to go through some questions and you know to get your questions about cybersecurity the way that this came about we receive so many questions on a daily basis about hey i'm interested in cybersecurity and but I don't know anything about cybersecurity. How do I get started? So that's why we are here to serve you tonight. Indeed, indeed. Uh, I want to thank everybody for, for taking the time and especially uh, Tech Coach Ralph. I'd like to thank you uh, for working with me and, and getting this whole thing put together in such a way that uh, we'll be able to share some of our experience across, uh, across all of the uh, <coughs> internet with everyone else. Uh, we have one other person coming in. I had a, a small uh, technical hiccup, and uh, we should be able to, to proceed uh, with them with them jumping in with, with one additional panelist. But I take full responsibility. It was <laughs> me, not him. All right, so while we wait on him to, uh, to show up, let's get started. So let's start off with some introductions um let me go first real quick because tonight is not about me at all so i'll just get myself out of the way and then we will turn it over to our cybersecurity specialist all right so i am tech coach Ralph. i am a qa engineer qa architect um, and technical coach as the name says uh, i've been doing qa for the past 15 years specializing in automation and strategies and qa infrastructure for the past 12 years so if you want to know more about that you can hit me up uh, YouTube channel is Tech Coach Ralph, and um, the additional information is going to be in the description of the video, so you can know how to find me. But let's get let's turn it over to the stars of tonight. So let's start off with Socks. Uh, hey, how you doing, everybody? Um, my name is Nico Socks Smith. Uh, we'll talk about my moniker Socks uh, a little bit later on, but um, I'd like to tell you guys that that's a pretty exciting conversation and something that we'll. We'll dive into at, at some point in time uh, throughout our relationship or, or getting to know each other. But um, I'm currently uh, supporting U.S. Cyber Command and uh, and other uh, DOD uh, initiatives as a capabilities developer. Uh, I have roughly, uh, I guess, 16 years uh, worth of space inside of uh, or experience within cybersecurity, uh, all the way back to before it was called cybersecurity and more. <laughs> more uh you know it with uh with horns so to speak and um you know uh that's you know that's kind of my government side as far as my regular every day i work on focusing on uh helping other people get not only uh involved or introduced into cybersecurity, but uplifting and including uh as many people as i can who show interest and, and capability aptitude within the cybersecurity space. So, um, you know, that's that's about it. Uh, that's that's all I have, and I'll kick it over to Ashley. Thank you. Um, my name is Ashley Deadass Sequera. Um, <laughs> I've been in cybersecurity, I think it's like a total of seven years now. Um, I did not start in any kind of like real IT thing until much later in life. Um, I'm a little bit younger than Sox, so like the path wasn't clear. And if Sox hadn't taken me under his wing all those years ago, I don't even think I'd be sitting here talking to you all right now. Um, but I work for Google. I am a customer engineer on the web fraud and cyber risk side. So I help with bots and automated takeovers and all that cool stuff. Um, previously worked at Palo Alto Networks. I'm a really fun technical trainer and adjunct professor, and I'm a PhD student. And I don't know why I did that, but I'm a PhD student. So <laughs> it's great to be here. <laughs> quick, quick question, Ashley. Um, with uh, with your uh, your experience, you said that you you're you didn't have a, a clear way ahead. It was something that was 
was um, that that jumped out with you, or you had some some type of special uh, opportunity to to get interested and involved inside of cybersecurity? Um, can you can you like touch a little bit about that? Because you got a really amazing backstory. I love your I love your hero narrative. That's what I like to call it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I actually, like, thought I was going to be a lawyer and, like, save the world or something. Um, I'm a musician. I was in the Army freaking band. Like, that's a thing you can actually do. <laughs> so I enlisted. I'm like, yeah, I'll be, like, this pro musician, and I'll go to UC Berkeley and go to law school. Well, 2008 crash happened, and I had always been, like, on the computer. You know, I'm a gamer. I was, like using the game genie back in like the early 90s like learning hex and all this crazy stuff you know but there wasn't like a i graduated from high school now i'm gonna go do this so i definitely was like all over the place man like i i was slinging boxes at ups i was folding t-shirts at old navy i worked at freaking GameStop, like everywhere but tech so fast forward i was doing like some really basic like help desk level it and I ended up making it into my first sock job, but it was like a contract role. Uh, this organization called Vets and Tech was doing this free training with this company called Palo Alto Networks. And I still didn't know nothing. So I was like, OK, I'll go to this free training. This is cool. Thanks for you know doing it. And I got hired out of the class and I ended up spending almost five years at Palo Alto before being poached by Google. I mean, I remember sleeping on people's couches. I remember like not being able to keep my phone on. Like it was a struggle, but I made it. And so I'm happy to share that story because I think we all can probably relate to when we've just been down and we're trying to make it. Amazing, thanks. Um, and and again, uh, I want to I want to take this time to you know to give a very warm welcome and a thank you to uh, Mr. Marcus Bowie uh, again, uh, uh, another amazing technologist that I've had the opportunity to to cross paths with to um to to work side by side i met him actually in my very early years and in getting into the dmv and uh he showed up he supported me um way back when i was doing ctfs um at, at a very small scale and now i'm a little bit bigger but um it's not about me i want to i want to throw the flowers uh to mr marcus bowie and, and thank you for joining us tonight hey thanks for having me and i'm glad to be here um, uh, we were going around the around the table, uh, kind of giving a giving our uh, sixty second uh, elevator pitch on who we are and and what we what we do or, or what's brought us here. Uh, could you give us a, a little snippet into your uh, into your background and and uh, where you are in in these days? Yes. Uh, so so things have changed since last time we saw each other. Um, so my name is Marcus Bowie. I'm the founder and COO of MaxBroad Technologies, a cybersecurity company in the DMV area. Uh, we do security operations, digital forensics, pen testing, um, threat hunting, assessments. We do everything, I will say that. And um, right now I'm a security engineer for Department of Energy. And outside of that, I have the, the business where I have different work at different places. Um, so that's that's the space I'm in, and we do workforce development. So that's another uh, another piece that I have added to our company. Awesome. Uh, quick quick question uh, because we we got uh, we have a moderator that's keeping us on schedule. Um, I'd like to I'd like to know because your story is really interesting. Also, your your hero narrative is amazing as well, Mr. Uh, uh, Marcus. Um, you didn't start off in, in, in cybersecurity. Uh, can you talk just briefly on where you come from and how you how you got there? Yes. So before I got into cyber and IT, I was doing architecture. And um, in the DMV area, I worked for a, a design build company. And when the market crashed in 08, I needed to hurry up and find something to do. And somebody told me about this this it free microsoft office specialist class and i took it and uh, passed it and they put me on the internship and uh years later i was able to get my foot into a real it job with that certification on the help desk side and um 
the guy I knew the guy who who hired me, and he and he told me at the interview, um, I know you, but I will fire you. So just come in here and do you know handle your business. I said that's all you need to tell me, and um, I ended up working my way up the ranks um, to even eventually becoming a manager, a team lead for that same help desk that I started on, and then um, I met. I end up meeting somebody else, which is a total different story. Well, how I got into cyber was through that help, same help desk. Um, so it, it, it was all about relationships and just being at the right place at the right time and having the right stuff that you needed at the right time. So that's how I got in. No degree. I still don't have a degree. I've never even been to college. Um, but um, I'm here and, and I'm happy to be in this space. Thanks for thanks for taking the time um, to to share your stories, um, and I'm gonna turn it over to over to uh, to, to Ralph. Uh, I know I've been been kind of uh, leading. I'm gonna gonna take a step back because now putting on the panelist hat. All right, so I, I will say that it's amazing how many, regardless of the field that you're in in tech, how many stories are so similar, right? Because everything that you guys shared. It's like the same story for me with QA, with the market crash and everything like that, right? So let's get into our very first question. All right. So <clears throat> for someone just starting out, what foundational knowledge or skill would you recommend they acquire in cybersecurity? So I'll take I'll take point on this one. And I guess we should, you know, we should kick it around the room, uh, have uh, have input from everyone else. Um, but when when I think about foundational knowledge, nothing beats nothing beats the ability to uh, to research and understand um, and understand uh, the information that you're that you're digesting. And being able to take that and synthesize that into into reason or into uh, things that that will assist you with with satisfying your end goal. So when it comes to things like um, when it comes to things like uh, cybersecurity, uh, I like to tell people don't get into cybersecurity unless you're prepared to bang your head against the wall. Right. 99% of the time yeah. and then find out the answer, discover the answer and not know why. Right. <laughs> so that level of understanding needs to be there. Um, and that's not to say that's not a defeatist mindset, but that's that's um, a mindset that that uh, that requires a large amount of, of ingenuity, interest and ability to persevere. Um, it doesn't matter what, like if you're the best coder in the world, if you can't take when your when your code is failing because you missed a semicolon over a thousand codes of line and, and not be able to see the humor in that, um, it, 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 it tends to become a very difficult place. Uh, and, and then, uh, I'll end with this, um, having the ability to, interact with other human beings will take you very far um, if you're able to uh, to to they used to call it soft skills but if you understand how to uh, how to interact with other individuals no matter how intelligent you are um, but in a way that that allows them to to remember you in the mindset as that person who helped me or didn't make me feel stupid um, th those are some of the things that are going to be able to help you get far. So I guess diplomacy. I'll pass. It, I'll pass it on to the next to the next person. Uh, I'll I'll speak up. So diplomacy is a good way to put it, but like, you really got to actually have the. Can you guys hear me? My mic is being weird. Okay, just making Make sure. So, yeah, you really got to have, like, the ability to, again, interact with lots of different types of people, because there's going to be those people that, like, 
it does not matter what they do. They get on your nerves and you still got to put a smile on your face and still be able to work with them and still come together to solve that problem. Um, the other thing that I think a lot of people take for granted is being what's called T-shaped. And I-shaped is I have hardcore technical. T-shaped is I have technical skills and I know how to build and work with other people to then bring all of us together to solve a problem. And you learn that in customer service. You learn that in medicine. So these other career fields that a lot of folks are coming from, you already innately have a lot of those skills. And then obviously there's like the foundational technical knowledge, like make sure you do your A plus, M plus, Sec plus, even if you never use it, just get it done because that is just that core base knowledge that everyone else is working from. And if you don't know what that language is, how are you going to participate? Yeah. So, so I, agree. I agree with everybody. And I would like to add this on top of what they're saying because they took the answers out of my mouth. But the one that I would say, it sounds cliche, but it's the truth. Just look at the job description. And what I would normally tell somebody trying to get in the field, depending on the position that you want, the you know, you first need to do an assessment, a self-assessment of what type of job are you looking for and what's going to best fit you. And once you identify that, take five of those job posts and look at the common denominators of each one. Um, some may say read know how to read network traffic. Some may see no. Some may say know how to read logs. Uh, know how to use different types of systems, and you take that and learn that. Um, that way you're not all over the place, you know, trying to find your way because there's a lot of information out here and you can you can get lost in it real quick. If you had the job description, you know exactly what you are going for. You know exactly what you're training for. And I recommend that on top of what everybody else has just said. Wait, so we don't need to know we don't need to know uh, quantum mechanics and no. Um, no. and low grade um, <laughs> processing. Listen, yeah. if you say math to me, I'm out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? It's it's right there. It's right there. It tells okay. you what search you're supposed to get. And they have wish lists, right? You don't got to get every cert. But just, just, I, again, I just go straight for the skills because you can work a deal out with some of these, some of these recruiters where they say you got to get the cert in 30 days or something like that, right? Um, but just go for the skills. Go for the skills. Hey, hey, Ralph, um, do we yes. have chance, a chance to kind of talk about the intersection between certification and capability yet? Or is that something that we'll address a little bit later on? Or something that we should pin and come back to a little bit later? Um, we can do it now. Why not? Okay. Let's do it now. So uh, it's, I'm glad that you brought that up, Marcus, because there's a lot of thought process out there, right? Uh, and because this is welcome to cybersecurity and helping people understand how to navigate this thing, um, there's a lot of industry uh, push that says, hey, um, come join my boot camp, come do these things, and then you get a job, and, you know, or, or we guarantee that you'll get a job. And uh, I'm not here to besmirch any, uh, any company that's out there, but I will tell you this, um, that when we talk about that intersection that I, that I was inter, uh, talking about, and thank you, Ashley, about talking about the eye, uh, the eye type, eye shaped people and the T shaped people. That's that's I love that. I've only heard that two times in my life, and you're the second time. Uh, so thank you. Um, but when we talk about certification, there's a such thing as people who look uh, paper perfect versus being techno technologically capable uh capable uh all of that to say is uh, i've been in the field and i'm sure that you have you know people who have gone they taken brain dumps got the certification went interviewed and didn't get the job or got the job and were fired like within a month or the first quarter um i you know the a plus the net plus the sec plus the the uh the cast p uh, the GSEC, all of those are wonderful certifications, but again, they mean nothing if we don't have the, 
the drive to persevere right. and to actually learn your task. If right. you if you get a job, nine times out of ten, um, they're going to train you for how they do log analysis. Mm -hmm. Right. But that doesn't. You need to have foundational understanding so that you you get to understand or or you're able to to navigate or negotiate the obstacles that they're going to put in front of you. So certifications, I'm not saying certification bad. I'm saying certification is good, but what makes it relevant is your ability to execute said uh said knowledge that's supposed to be requisite within that body of knowledge if that if that makes sense. And I'll yeah. I'll kick it around. Well, like, it's it's more than that, too, right? Because, like, I have a good amount of certs, but I know people who are more certer than me that if you ask them something in, like, a common sense setting, they don't even know the first thing to say. Um, you know, like, I got my GSEC, I got my GCIH, but if you ask me about incident response, I can actually speak to it. And, you know, there's, like, a, it, again, it really depends. Like, every person's different. Like, I'm super personable. So honestly, my networking skills and my personality usually get me in the door. And then I get these other certifications to, again, just grow my own knowledge. But I've also been to school. I've also done the help desk thing. Like I've done all of it because you need to kind of pull from everywhere. Like just doing certs. Like I know someone on LinkedIn who's got like 140 different types of cert. I'm not even joking. Like it's like, like CompTIA and SANS and like all these little paper search from all these little training vendors and stuff. But I don't know if they actually know anything. Like to me, that's like super suspicious. Like I'd be like, I, I don't believe you. Right. Yeah. But if you have an, a, a reasonable amount and you have the experience to back it up, like that makes a big difference. But when you're trying to get in, you know, sometimes just about getting in the door. So like DOD is a good thing because they've got that whole set of certifications on that 8750.1, I think is what it is. I'm rusty on it. But if you meet yeah. those certs, you are much more likely to get a job. So right. you have to think about what you're approaching and how, like, what is it that they're looking for? What do the people on the team have? And if it's nothing, maybe you got to figure out a way to like make yourself look more valuable to help enhance that team. Like what value can you bring? So the pivot from the value question, uh, comment. Let's say Security Plus. Everybody's going after Security Plus. You know who else is going after the Security Plus? The mailman down the street got Security Plus. The lady at the at the grocery store got Security Plus. So what's going to separate you from those people that got the Security Plus? It's the skills. Everything falls, rises and falls on the skills. The certs are great. Degrees are great. They're the paper that you know, that's the paperwork you need uh, to get in in most places. But when you get to that interview, it all boils down to skills um, and skills pay the bills. So if you're not practicing your skills, if you're not practicing the right skills, um, you, you're going to have a short, uh, you know, you're not really going to gonna make it far in the field if you don't have those right type of skills on hand. So this is what we're going to do, right? Because you guys are so good. You actually answered question two before we even asked it. I'm just okay. going to show question two for a second, just so people can, and I'm going to read it, but then we're going to move on to question three, because if you, if you listen to the last five minutes, this is exactly what question two is, right? It's what were your initial steps into the cybersecurity security realm? And how did you bridge any gaps in your knowledge or experience, which is exactly what you guys just answered, right? So we're going to transition to question three now. Right. It says, how do non-traditional backgrounds or experiences enrich the cybersecurity field? And can you share any examples? Let's start off with let's start off with Marcus on this one. Okay. Non-traditional background. So it, define what that is. And I can tell you what do you mean by non non-traditional? Meaning like you didn't come in from you you didn't grow up into the IT realm. You, yeah, okay. like so you didn't necessarily like you know it wasn't your major in college, and right, 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 right. You weren't okay. made for this, you know. Right. So, what did I learn as an architect? Um, attention to detail was big. Uh, you you draw that you if you draw this design up, this floor plan up in the wrong specs, and they build it, 
who gets dinged for that? That's me. Um, attention to detail. Um, having the taking the initiative, like what uh, what Nico was saying, what Sox was saying, t- uh, having that problem solving mindset. So if you're stuck on something, are you willing to take the extra steps to figure it out? All of those things helped me when I tr- when I got myself into the IT space. It's because you're going to run into issues, and you need to be able to know how to handle them um, in that in that in that in that order or in that space. But I say non-traditional backgrounds will give you experience that you not normally would would not normally have gotten had you went the normal route. You know, customer service is another one. You know, what I'm saying those who work um, in a different uh, like IT help desk, you you cyber's not gonna teach you customer service. You know, um, some of the tools and some of the tools in in the in the IT space you're not really dealing with on the cyber side, like Active Directory, like creating tickets. You know, what I'm saying those different t- those different skills that you're getting, the command line, the basic command line when you get a user on the phone. Uh, basic troubleshooting steps though believe it or not those same skills are needed in analysis steps when you're on like the blue like if you're in a sock you know what i'm saying you still gonna have to use a command line in the sock you still need to know how to write a ticket in the sock space you still need to know how to use active directory to lock down accounts on the sock space i learned that in it in the in the it help that space so i grabbed that over so there's some things that you can, there's always tangible skills that you have. You just got to spell it out once you get into that space. Once you get into that space, you'll recognize, oh, I need to use this, or I need to use that, or I need to bring this to uh, to the to the table. Um, so everybody has it. It's just, you just have to, you just have to identify what it is in that situation. All right. What you got on this, Ashley? Um, well, I'm, I'm a musician by trade. Like I started literally was like hardcore band nerd, everything like that. But playing music teaches pattern recognition. It teaches persistence because when you have to work on something that's super tough and you're trying to get through it and you need to play it perfect and play it right, you practice. I'm on try hack me every day, practicing just like I'm trying to learn an instrument, you know, because there's no way to know everything. But those are two big ones that I could think of off the top of my head. The other one is that when you're in these other weird situations, what has helped me, especially when I'm helping with like cybersecurity problems is knowing different verticals. So like my mom was a nurse and I used to work in like healthcare, like basic IT. I used to work for school districts. So when I'm talking to customers about SLED or like their problems within like that state local education space, I know what those look like because I remember seeing the annoying high schoolers plugging in a USB thinking they were awesome because they booted up Kali Linux in the library, you know, working in retail, retail theft looks different you know, than like regular, just like, oh, I'm trying to hack this enterprise. So there's different motivations. And when you deal with things like shrink in a customer service role or heck working at GameStop, knowing how to like troubleshoot the little demo Xbox so people could come in and play games, all those are applicable skills that you can then leverage later on. Right. Right. And I get, I guess it's on me this time, huh? Um, I'll keep it quick and and short. Um, when when I think about non traditional backgrounds, I think about the fact that I owned an art gallery, right? Complete artsy fartsy type of guy right here, everybody. Um, I I believe that aspect of uh, or entering into cybersecurity and and my understanding of problems was was greatly impacted because now I'm looking at it from that more creative uh, from that more creative position um, it it allows me to use more of my my looser uh, my looser right brain uh, in order to look at some of the things that the other panelists mentioned such as pattern recognition but also um, there's a there's an intuition that comes with cybersecurity that, that um, I believe that art and all of those different things uh, within my background have, have prepped me uniquely to be, be able to do. All right, great. So let's move up. So I just want to say first, um, we do see all the questions coming in the chat and we will be addressing them at the end of the stream. So shout out to everyone in the chat. Thank you for following along. 
All right, so we are going to jump to question number four. And that is, can you discuss roles in cybersecurity that don't require a coding background? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It sounds like There's... Ashley is ready to get that one. Man. And, and I'll say this, I'll say this, right? We like I've seen this question all over the place. So I, I think a lot of people are waiting for this answer. So it's <laughs> all, no pressure, Ashley, no pressure, but you know, it's all on you. Um, so I just actually left Google's uh my last role at Google moved into a technical role from a non-technical one. I was a program manager. I literally planned like training events and like little parties and stuff for like the customer engineers to go to after they got done doing training. It was a lot of spreadsheets. It was a lot of building relationships. Again, I didn't do anything super technical. I didn't write any code. I just talked to people and said, hey, can you be here at this time, this date? So that's one big one. GRC is another one that I think a lot of folks overlook to get into the door with because it's policy. It's all policy. You're reading documents. You're doing like compliance checks, things like that. Like you definitely don't need coding for that. Selling in cybersecurity, all talking, all gift a gab. Um, even a sales engineer position, depending on the company you work at, it's more about pitching to the customer versus showing them like the actual technical solution. And now every technology is not built the same, but I barely just figured out how to pr print like Hello World in Python like last week. So like I've made it pretty far, all things considered. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of stuff um, like even recruiting or doing like kind of like the build up, you know, to like getting into cybersecurity. Some of that isn't that technical. Even some QA positions are just using a tool. You don't have to know how to use code. You're just testing and validating that the tool works the way it needs to. So those are kind of like the few that I could think of off the top of my head. Party planner at Google, y'all. That's a job. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what do you got on this, Doc? Uh, definitely uh, uh, UI UX uh, when we're talking about wireframes, things like that. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about, I, I like to think about those, uh, the UI UX as the, the people who, who um, uh, put the dresses on mannequins, right? And then when I think about mannequins, I, I like to think about um, I like to think about when we're talking about back to back to uh, what Ashley was talking about policy, but very specifically, let's talk about let's talk about people who are who are authors who who wanted to who wanted to write books. We need those type of people inside the cybersecurity field because those are the people who write amazing white papers. They understand relationships between uh, uh, adverbs and and homonym relationships, so to speak. Um, uh, and because they understand those things, they're able to write documentation that we're going to depend on in order to hack a machine, re uh, repair a machine, or even modify a machine uh, uh, at every different level. So um, I'm, I'm just thinking what, what comes to mind when I think about those things are those people who are amazing at documentation. And I'll end there. Those technical writers, man, they make big bucks just to like get good screenshots and put it in a doc to make it make sense. That's it. I know people that do that at Google and they don't know anything about GCP. They just know how to make documentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and PowerPoint, they're PowerPoint masters. Mm. Very, and, very and, and for submitting contracts. And for submitting contracts for bids and proposals and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, they make they make some good money. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, so let's move on to... So that pretty much covered question number five, because question number five was, how would you describe the significance of these non-coding roles in overall cybersecurity landscape, which I think we, we addressed that as well. So let's move on to question number six. All right. For those concerned about the technical demands of cybersecurity, what advice would you give to reassure them about the breadth of opportunities available? You ain't got to know it all. <laughs> you don't. You really don't have to know it all. Yeah. Like, I think all of us sitting on this call have different areas of expertise and specialty. But like, I know if I was like, hey, y'all trying to set up some Palo Alto firewalls, like everyone would probably be like, uh, 
But if you start talking to me about QA, you start talking to me about those hardcore pen tests, I'm like the one making that awkward face. So know that like you can focus on what interests you. You can. You don't have to filter all of it through. Like I'm really interested in like the people and like processes part because I think that that's where we can do a lot of optimization. But I'm still a very beginning, like basic, just getting started in my own programming and like coding knowledge journey. So I would just say like, yes, you could stick to your own interests. If it's people, stick to people. If it's the technology, stick to the technology, but know that you can deep dive on one or two things and you don't have to know the sprawl of knowledge because there's too much out there. Like there's no way to keep up with all of it. Correct. And also tech is a, the cyber field is a revolving door. There's people that's already in there that's moving up. They are uh, getting promoted. And if you stick with it long enough, if you stay in the game long enough, the door is going to open up for you eventually. You know, they're going to look, there's going to be a spot for you. You know, uh, at that point, you want to make sure you got your skills up and got your search ready for that opportunity because it, 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 it'll pain you if that door opens up and you're not ready for it. So, um, just, just keep that in mind that it's a revolving door. People get in the door all the time. Um, they just, they just was ready for the opportunity there at hand. And now I'll, I'll jump on, I'll jump on the bay, bandwagon with, with the both of you with, um, a lot of people say, Hey, let's be, let's be a master of every, or let's, let's, let's uh, be a jack of all trades, master of none. And and there's there's a lot of that running rampant, but it's it's okay to identify your lane and just stay mm -hmm. in your lane. The the difference between you and the guy that knows everything is the the level of depth that you can go within your particular craft, um, and that's where your value is going to be found. Uh, I know people who you know who again going back to logs because that's the bane of existence for a lot of blue teamers. Right. right. Uh, just reading logs. If you just want to focus on reading logs, there is a job for you. I promise right. you that you will be. And, and as long as you make yourself indispensable, that's the next key is just make yourself indispensable. And that comes with mastering and, and having passion for your craft. And I'll land there. All right. So we are going to jump to question eight because we'll circle back to question seven in the Q&A portion because I think that we will be able to share that and give some more context on that um, at, towards the end. So number eight, what are some reputable training or certification programs for beginners? How can someone gain practical experience if they are just starting and don't yet have a job in the field? I just dropped a link to try hack me. I'm just going to plug it all day because it really still is to this day. Like I I'm telling you, I'm in here every day, learning something new. Um, they have certification programs. Now they've got entire learning paths. And again, it's a way to show that you are hungry to continue to grow your knowledge and have some demonstrable skills. That's like my go-to hack so the box is good too. So I'm not I'm not sure or as a matter of fact I, I, they're doing a reboot but it's called called Run Code Ninja, uh, Run Code Ninja again uh, Army uh, Army Vet uh, also uh, have been a member of the uh, the great uh, U.S. Army National Guard uh, had the opportunity to meet the guy who created uh, Run Code Ninja and for a long time that if you if you if you could uh, demonstrate skill set there you'd be able to go into most coding jobs and then show where you are ranking because of the level and uh, and the technical acumen that was requ required in order to be successful there uh, as well as um, as well as your your typical you can pick any bug bounty program from uh, from bug bounty to hacker one uh, I, you know, I, I used to be a, a Snack red team, uh, red team guy. So, uh, I, I think just getting out there and, and, and trying things out and Ashley just dropped a link to, uh, an amazing, uh, a platform called security blue team and where, uh, I created their first or I was part of their first, uh, CTF, one of the content engineers there. So, 
uh, CTFs and things like that are great ways for you to to demonstrate uh, uh, capabilities as well as your your JIAC and your and your CompTIA uh, certification programs as well. Uh, I'll end there. So can I throw my piece? <laughs> um, of course. <laughs> these are these are all reputable online trainings that you could take some affordable, some you got to pay some free, but I've learned come to know that some of the best training you can get is by kicking the tires, installing the tools in your own home lab and kicking the tires on it. There's going to be some things that you're, that you're going to see that may not be available on some of these platforms, like configuring certain logs to get things to work get the networker to talk, um, uh, you know, spin up a VM, you know, create a, create a, a active directory environment by installing the tools, configuring it, create your users, create your policies, spin up a SIM, a free SIM, uh, send some logs to it. Um, you, you'll be able to see a lot more things that are not um, privy to you on some of these platforms. You may get the skill, but the missing pieces are, you're not going to see the missing pieces like that from my experience. I can't speak for everybody else, but I can speak for me. Yeah, somebody post, actually posted Security Onion. Spin up Security Onion. Look at some of those logs. Look at, look at, um, and, and here's another thing with Security Onion. You still have to configure the systems to even send logs. So now you're going in, you're learning all of these different technologies in one in one deployment, you're learning Linux, you're learning networking at the same time, and you're seeing how this how this stuff talk um, and how everything works. So I, I I say also in addition to this type of training, kick the tires in the home lab. Everybody should have a home lab, some type of computer that they can practice on um, to to keep their skills up and sharp. You know, I, I often run into people who who want to get into the field that don't have, they don't have a home computer. And I'm like, <laughs> how are you going to practice? How are you going, how are you right. going to get shot when the new stuff come out? And, and, and that's another way you can get it, you know, keep, keep your eyes, you know, keep your, your ears to the streets to figure out what's the new tool. Okay. Is it on GitHub? Download it, install it, kick the tires on it, read the readme file, read the documentation and, and see how to set it up. And, um, use that in addition to the online trainers. I think you'll get a way better uh, training experience on that. And somebody asks, how do you get that without the job? Again, I go back to the job description. If they say I need to learn how to use Snort, guess what I'm doing? I'm installing Snort. I'm going to look up YouTube University. Man. How do you read Snort logs? <laughs> how do you write Snort rules? You know what I'm saying? I'm using all of that because it's there, you know, um, and you also get that experience that nobody can take away from you to put on your resume. Home lab seconding. I got a whole, whole server with all kinds of stuff on. I got my right. ESXi running. Like you got to You got, <laughs> I got, I mean, and I, got I, I, I can shame this plug, but I'm not teaching. I just taught a free class last weekend on how to read PCAPs in a sock space and what are the top five protocols that we have to analyze. And um, I got a YouTube, I, I should have posted it. Well, you can send it out later, but I, I posted it on YouTube so people can see what do I do every day at work? I pretty much showed you how to do it. And it was a hands-on, it was a hands-on training that people joined in on and we reviewed some PCAPs, but um, I may be able to post some stuff too. Somebody says Sox has training. Yeah, Sock does has a training environment. He always carry around servers. Everywhere I see him, he got some servers on. Man. <laughs> all right. So that's amazing. And what I'm hearing from this, all right, is that um, we can't be theorists. We have to become practitioners. The things that we learn, we have to put them into use. Um, you know, so invest time, invest money into your into what you want to do and go from there. You can read a book, but until you start putting it into action, you're not going to get anywhere. So, right. all right, we are going to move on to 
question number nine. All right. So how do you see how do you see the importance of diversity in the cybersecurity community in both in terms of background and skill set? And just to add, what initiatives or programs do you recommend that pro that promote diversity in the sector? Ooh, what a loaded question. <laughs> Uh, so I am the only black woman in an organization of about 200 engineers. And, you know, a lot of the time, especially when you work in corporate, like you're going to be in a room where you're like the only or like there's barely anyone that looks like you. That alone is what brings a completely unique perspective, because a lot of these these people like they have the exact same background. So same lived experiences. They usually approach problems the same way. I've been out here doing all kinds of wild nonsense. So when I come in and I'm like, hey, like, what about this? They're like, oh, that's a really good idea because it's a different perspective. And so it's not so much just about racial diversity, but intellectual diversity. Right. Some of us went to college. Some of us right. didn't go to college. Shoot, right. some of us might have gone to jail. And some of us didn't go to jail. But that intellectual diversity is what makes it so that you all come together to solve all these different problems, like 100%. So that for me, like, that's the big thing. And then the other thing that I like to do is like, I like, I just founded a DEF CON group. I live in New Mexico, y'all. Like, there's like five of us that do tech here. I'm serious. And we, I went to conferences. I went all over the country and I found 18 people that are in this area that we didn't know that all of us were here. And we all have our own different lived experiences. So stuff like that is how you build community and building community is how we change the industry for the better. Yeah. I, I, I want to piggyback on that. It's not so much as racial. And I am the only one in my team that's a black guy. However, it I don't it doesn't it doesn't phase me if I'm supposed to be in that seat. <clears throat> if you got skills, if you are in a seat and you're the only one in it, that color, that race. Don't look at it like it's a shock or anything like you're supposed to be there. You had something uh, that 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 was valuable or of value to be in that seat. However, what I have saw over the years is that it was it was from my experience, it was less about racial and it was more about meritocracy. Mm -hmm. Do You have the skills to be here. Do you have the initiative? Do you have the drive to learn and grow and be great at your craft? And that made a break who sits in the seat or who comes into the door. So uh, if, you, if you're if you in a mindset that, oh, I'm going to be the only one or, oh, I'm this, that, and the third, I would say switch your mindset a little bit. You'd be surprised that even though you're the only black person in the room, you it, it really it really doesn't matter if, yeah. your skills, if your skills are on point. You know what I'm saying? So, um I, I I never ran into it. I never ran into a space where my race mattered. I ran into a space where my skills did. Mm -hmm. so keep your skills up. Make sure your skills are on point, and and show them why you belong in the room. If you feel like you don't belong there. I mean, that's not to say, like, I haven't straight up had people be like, I'm not talking to you because you're black. Because, like, that has definitely happened. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not, saying not that discount Yeah, I'm not yeah, discounting that at all. Wrong. But... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to be there and you got to show up and you got to do the work and you got to show folks that like, again, just like just like Marcus is saying, like, you're meant to be there. Like, right. that's all that matters at the end of the day. Right. And uh, I'll keep it. I'll keep it short because you all have made some really amazing points. My only thing that that I'll add to it, it'll go back to what we were discussing earlier. Um, the diversity, the diversity in thought that um that Ashley was talking about is is shown and displayed based upon where you're coming from. Uh you you become that enabler. You become that 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 combat multiplier uh to your organization from the diversity and thought from where you come from. Um for for instance, um you know, just uh the way that that the military runs its cyber protection teams and things like that. Their defenders, their blue team, their red team, their their purple teams are quite different than what you'll encounter in in the uh, in the private in the private spaces. 
However, um, I, I think that one of the really amazing things that, that you'll find from people that are quote unquote go-getters are the ability to be flexible, the ability to adapt and overcome uh, within the different environments that they get pushed into. And, and with that diversity uh, of approach, you're, you're able to also um, uh, lean into how you can, uh, how, how you can relate and enable your your organization to be successful and I'll, I'll land there all right i'll just add a little bit of my two cents um coming from like all the stuff that i've done in qa my like if anyone here follows my channel um my motto is we're engineered to win and my only goal is to be the best right uh in whatever i i go into so like when i'm working on qa i i listen to what the developers are talking about i try to add i try to add value to that and it's all about adding value and the more value you add, the more um, the more they want to work with you, and the more they appreciate you. And you know, try to do so, like go outside of your job description to add more value to, um, and that way it's like you become invaluable, and they you know there's nothing else they can say about you. All right, so what we're gonna do we are gonna go to our um, questions, right? Our Q and A portion, right? So uh, I'm, we're gonna start off with some people who ask questions like. Before the stream even started, we're gonna handle those questions, and then we have some we have some questions from the chat that we can address as well. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just have one person, whoever chooses to answer that question, um, and we'll we'll keep going in the essence of time. And um, I have some extra time, so if anyone else has extra time, they want to stick around to answer some more questions. I'm I'm here for it. I don't know what everyone's schedule looks like, so that's totally up to you. Let's start off with this one. I guess I should answer this one because it's like related to QA. Uh, so the question is, are there, are there things, frameworks, program languages on the job training that QAs learn, do that are applicable to cybersecurity? So I'm going to give a pretty general answer is, I think everything that QA does is applicable to everything, right? Um, and I think that everyone in one way or another, they also practice QA, right? And so, like, I'll, I'll say for program languages, I'll probably probably Python because um, there's probably some packages that you can use to uh, do some cybersecurity stuff. But like, I think that cybersecurity is a subset of QA, right? Because you need to, you need like penetration testing and all that type of stuff. It's still testing at the end of the day, right? So I would say like probably learn Python, look up some, look up some um, frameworks that, you know, search framework, uh, what frameworks are used for cybersecurity for, um, for QA, for testing, right? And then install those and start playing around with that. Like Marcus was saying earlier, um, start building something and then you'll, you'll go from there. You'll learn more from there. Quick, quick question, um, Coach. Uh, isn't regression testing directly related to DevSecOps uh, when when we're talking about uh, uh, the developmental CI/CD pipeline? Yeah, uh, I mean that's the thing. Like with with regression testing, especially, it touches everything, right? So to make sure that developers aren't introducing introducing new bugs, if you have if you have regression testing for uh, for like security gaps, security loopholes, if the developer were to make a change, that regression test should catch those as well. So um, QA encompasses all of it. And uh, like, not that I'm in the cybersecurity realm particularly, but from the training that I've had for um, compliance and security, I could easily see things that I could implement for cybersecurity if I was um, in that realm. Amazing, amazing. I, I just remember working side by side with, the, with a few developers and they're like, hey, we're doing unit testing. And I'm like, okay, well, what's a unit test? And how can I break it? <laughs> uh, so, so I think definitely that, that, uh, that QA, um, just ensuring that, you know, we're, we're with, operating within the boundaries of the specs that's been laid out before us, as well as having stop gaps or, or abilities to identify uh, um, uh, issues as we migrate from major, uh, major versions that that we're we're able to to, to properly uh, um, protect or inform right each person a sensor uh, within cybersecurity 
All right. So learn we're going to oh, go ahead. Learn C if you want to do like malware, like analysis type stuff. Um, Python yeah. if you want to do scripting. Um, SOAR if you're familiar with that term, security operations automated response. Most of them are written in Python. So I would say like those two for sure. Um, that's why I'm actually getting better at Python because I can build playbooks all day, but I want to do more. So I'm trying to improve my Python as we speak. Go is a good one too. Uh, if you want to work at Google, you want to do some malware stuff at Google, pretty sure it's all written in Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going. I'm going to transition to another question. Uh, so, and well, anyone on the panel can answer this, and then we'll go to another question, right? How do I leverage my engineering background to get into cybersecurity? Troubleshooting. Troubleshooting steps, handling handling uh, issues, handling issues that you dealt with on the engineering side. Um, they, everything you got to understand, most of these, most of the, the, the interviews, interview questions you're going to run into are scenario based. So if you relay whatever issue you had, troubleshooting is always going to be a big thing that they need on the cybersecurity side. And it also depends on what type of role you're going for. Are you trying to get into cyber engineering or are you trying to get into another space in cyber? So uh, I think. I think if we knew what role you wanted to get into, I could better answer that. But if if, if you're just leaving it at this question, I say the troubleshooting steps you did, how you handled an issue, um, is is you can leverage that side all day long um, to get into cyber. I have a a little bit to add on to that as uh, as well. When we look at engineering, I, I think about pedagogy, like that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh, the ability to take the information and lay it down in, um, in, in an in a easy to digest but logical sequence. So uh, understanding the way that, that things are put together, uh, I think the mathematics aspect from engineering, the, the heart science understanding is where we're really going to get the biggest bang for the buck. So, um, you know, yes, we could talk about, uh, we could talk about, uh, uh, cyber, uh, cyber, and we can talk about, uh, engineering as far as endpoints and networks and things like that. But, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to say that, uh, that type of type of brain functions very well inside of the coding environment. Uh, they're able to better understand how different functions go into feeding different methods that produces different models that enable success there. Um, uh, malware development or malware research are, are other places where where you might find that that comes very easy to you. All right, I'm going I'm going to go to a question in the chat. So let me put it on the screen. It's, what about using S E S I E M? The company I work for uses Splunk. How would I gain experience on that on my own? Oh, you got it. All right, go ahead. Splunk is free for sixty days. Install it in a Linux VM. Spin it up. Install the folders, the universal folders, on a Windows or a Linux VM. Send some logs to Splunk. Turn on YouTube University, buy a Udemy course, or even take the free Splunk intro to Splunk classes and play around with the command line or the, the search prompt. Also, Splunk. don't forget to learn Rex. Uh, I, I have my, my Splunk yes. cert I got my Splunk certification um, certified for a couple things with Splunk. Um, along with setting it up inside of your lab. Uh, one of the things that you can use is go to malwareanalysis.net. I believe they have a connection, a collection of uh, PCAPs that have nefarious activities. Run mm -hmm. it through, uh, run it through your ingester, and and work on building indexes and dashboards. Uh, yeah. That's a real, real quick way for you to to get a real quick win. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's go to another question from the chat. Okay. So let me be more specific. 
<laughs> if you could redo what you know now, what would be the fast track way that you would go for starting in this industry, certs, and ways to get the skill practice? I, I see I see Sock shaking his head. So let's go to Sock. No. Just stop it. Just stop it. Stop with this. <laughs> stop with this fast everything. Like for I'm I'm being honest. Y'all think I'm just I'm I swear to God. Stop trying to shortcut. Take your sure. time. Yes. Learn the skill. If okay, all right, here here's a fast track. I, I believe that I fast tracked here, right? I think everyone on the panel, especially listening to their background, have fast tracked to where they are. Um, you're not gonna learn what I learned in eighteen years and under eighteen years. Maybe maybe you learn in fifteen years, right? I'll give you three three years. Right. Um, if I had the opportunities, here's here's how it go. All right. Um, I would get rid of all of my personal relationships. I would flush those down the toilet. I would just focus on coding, and I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, uh, snippy at the at the mouth or anything like that. I'm just being honest with you. In order to obtain a ve- a faster thing, you got to drop weight. And the quickest place to drop weight is in all of your social interactions. Like, don't don't go and and get don't have any drinking experiences. But but you got to worry about this thing where you cut out in your social life. Those are going to come back to bite you because when you don't have interpersonal skills, you're going to end up like back in the day when I was early in the uh, uh, in cyber or back in IT right help desk right we took people who didn't know how to interact with people and we put them in a server room and you made some money but because you weren't good for a customer facing job you couldn't grow so please take your time uh learn things uh learn at your own pace and don't rush um it's it's not going to come to you overnight um and and it's gonna take some hard uh hard work and sweat equity uh and if you don't understand mm-hmm. what sweat equity is get mm-hmm. used to it because it's going to be a wild ride and and that's all that i have um i'll just add you know it, it's it's funny you say that because i think all of us if we're sitting here at some point we had an interest in technology we just didn't know what that was going to manifest into um you know, I've been on the internet, like thinking about it. I think I've had an AOL. I had like one of the first like 10,000 AOL accounts, literally because my dad just happened to have a computer in the early 90s. But like, I didn't actually get into this stuff until recently. So you got to remember, like, it's going to take time to get to like that role that you're actually striving for. And sometimes you got to take like that crappy sock job on the graveyard yeah. shift to get your foot in the door. Sometimes right. you do got to do the help desk. Sometimes you got to do like, like I was doing technical training, which I like, but I was doing like sales engineering and all this other weird stuff because I just wanted to get the experience. And I'm finally in a technical role at Google with a general studies degree, you guys, like the most, I couldn't pick a major like degree out there. Okay. So once you find what you want, you have, you have to push, you have to push. And like, if you have socks, like I'm always pushing, like always like trying to get new certs, always trying to build my knowledge, always trying to get involved in the community. And I just talk to a lot of people and I ask like, well, what are you doing? And what are you doing? Right. Like you have to get involved and like you don't right. get to be a basement dweller no more. We don't get to hide in the basement and not talk to people and make good money. Like you have to actually build that skill. Networking yeah. will set you free. I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> so I'll just add this real quick. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Marcus. Let me say something about that. Uh, somebody said how to get to the money quick. What's the fastest way? Um, something I learned walking in the door is that the money is great. The money is always going to be there, but if that is your only reason to be in the field, is that is your only, if that's your only reason to be in the field, you're not going to last long. Now, why did I say that? Because they may pay you the money you want, 
But there are things on the job that they couldn't pay you enough to do. Meaning there's going to be some stuff there that, that you're going to run into on the cyberspace in the cyber in the cyber field that you'll be ready to quit the day of because of what it is. Um, it, it, they're not going to pay. You got to have more than you got to have more than just a dollar amount on your mind to keep you to keep you going in the field. And and if you don't believe me, ask some of the some of the people I run into. They getting paid the numbers they want. They getting paid the money they want. But if they get hit with a task that they don't understand and and it's it's real daunting on them, they're ready to quit and leave that money behind the day of. So just make sure yeah the money is good, but you gotta have a little bit a little bit something more than just wanting that dollar amount. You gotta have some passion or something behind it to keep Wait. staying in it. So Marcus, are you saying that uh, some people don't enjoy those three o'clock in the morning calls saying like nah. everything is down nah. and we need nah. you to like Page you know go in, reboot server like Page nah. duty alert. Nah. I have you know, like, listen, you're re-triggering me right. Like I'm gonna <laughs> hang up right now if I hear a pager go off, okay? Right. Like <laughs> here's 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 fifteen hundred alerts. I need you to go through each one to see if they're if they're legit or not. And it's the yeah. same alert. Mm -hmm. There's people mm -hmm. willing to quit on the mm -hmm. day of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> how much money they have, they're ready to quit because why am I doing this? This right. is terrible. My brain hurts. I'm ready to quit. So you gotta have a little bit some more than I want two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You gotta have that you gotta have that energy, that drive, and that hunger, and at least some passion about the field to stay in there. Because you're gonna be hit with something where you like, man, I don't even think it's worth I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I'm addicted to the chaos because I, I love like that three o'clock like, in the morning. Low key, <laughs> low key, I'm like, you can't predict what's coming next. Like, right. I, I just think that you guys have a weird addiction to abuse. <laughs> um, I mean, we don't have time for the therapy session, but like, we can talk about that on the next episode. Like, <laughs> hey, Ralph, um, I I know that we're I know that we're. Um, we had we we had some time limits that were put into place um and i've really been enjoying our conversation but do we have any uh we 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 have enough time to, to go over uh, a couple other things and then and then wrap up let's do this let's do one last question and then we can um show the the um chart oh, and then okay, we can wrap we'll take it up away. all right okay so Let's do this. Uh, let's let me see. Let's go with. Let's go with. This. How does RPA factor into cybersecurity, and is it something that one can leverage skill-wise as an uh, aspiring entry level? I had to look that up to be honest with you. I was like, "What's RPA?" Okay, so looking at it, so I'm assuming if I'm if I'm googling correctly, this is about like robotic process automation. Can someone verify for me in the chat? I'm making sure I'm looking at that right because I have an idea of where that can fit. Um, so automation, understanding like the meticulous nature of like building out and like automating processes is like huge in cyber because we do a lot of the same crap every day, all the time, over and over again. Um, so understanding the thought process and building those out, like robotics, that's, they thrive on that, right? It's always like that, you know, you're going to do something more than once you automate it. And that's literally like what robotics is doing. So I could see that coming into play, but I'll let somebody else take it. Cause I definitely was like, what if, is that? <laughs> if, so I've seen it, I've seen it bumping across the internet as disruptors within the cyber field, uh, the ability for you know you got the tesla cars coming out and all these different things right so the weight that that's passing down onto the human capital within our industry um you know we have we have to you know we have to wonder is that going to uh disrupt the ability for people to you know to not only uh get a job or to walk in with the job but also it, can we use that as a dis demonstrative talent to show value to our future uh, employer, and I would argue yes. I would I would say yes, um, 
to to the point where um like like you just put in there when when that's the first thing that I thought about Ashley is ICS and SCADA, right? Uh, how how those things are 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 being transitioned. Uh, let's look at the auto uh, IAW at at war right now. There there's uh, some big things happening there. Um, I think that when we come in as a putting on a solutions architect hat uh, and taking those skill sets that we learn. Um, uh, as we move forward into the uh, IA, uh, ML, uh, or AI, ML uh, space, we'll, we'll start to uh, see a lot more uh, requirements uh, for our people who are starting to, you know, starting to get hired, uh, uh, having familiarity as we start to integrate these new technologies and how they represent not only within the cyberspace, uh, cyberspace realm, but start to uh, peer into our, our, our real lives. So um, I hope that I didn't just throw out a bunch of mouth pasta. <laughs> I think that's a technical term too, mouth pasta. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's in the first chapter. Right? Yeah. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to go to the, um, to the map. Uh, so to the chat, right? We have documented all your questions. We're not going to get time to get to all of them today. But we will be addressing it in a future episode where we'll, we'll, we're going to get all your questions answered. So don't worry, right? Because you guys have questions and we try to have answers, right? So uh, I'm going to pull up question number seven from our list because this one is going to, I think this will, this, this will actually answer a lot of your questions, right? <clears throat> it says, are there specific career maps or pathways you'd recommend for those looking to enter cybersecurity without prior experience? So I am going to, I don't know, do you, do you want to share your, your screen, Socks? To, what, um, what I can do is mm -hmm. I can either drop the, I can drop the link in the, in the chat for you to be able to share that. Let me copy that. Boom. Okay. And uh, I'll drop it here. Boom. And I dropped you the actual link, or I can share. I can share my screen as well. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and share your screen because I'm gonna have to like log into GitLab and stuff like that. Not a problem. All right. So, uh, so everybody who has uh, who has made it this far, I'd like to first of all thank you all for for tuning in with us. Uh, and this is a great uh, takeaway tool that um, that I took time to put together after um, hearing this question being asked. Uh, and so let me go ahead over to present um, and share screen. Yes. And we're going to share entire screen. We'll share that screen and bam. Okay. So I know that looks super tiny right now. But uh, this is a welcome to a cybersecurity field, and you should probably be able to see my uh, see my cursor. Uh, we'll we'll drop the link in the chat for everybody who's been present to be able to go here. But uh, what I wanted to do is create the ability for people to uh, to answer the question themselves, depending upon uh, what other uh, what what place in cybersecurity that they'll find themselves wanting to go into. Uh, if you look at the diagram key, and, and I didn't see one of these when I went onto the internet, so I decided to make one. Uh, here's our here's our key. Uh, this cross, the green cross, tells us that it's free and open source resources. Um, the purple box is certifications that are required for the job. Uh, the orange box is the skills covered or offered within that specific function. And then the cybersecurity role or function has been broken down into six key uh, places. Uh, so we'll come over to the center. And of course, uh, welcome to cybersecurity. This thing is pretty big. Um, we'll say that um, cybersecurity, based upon my assessment, is broken down into these six areas. Network security, endpoint application security, incident response and forensics, uh, security awareness training, governance risk and compliance and identity and access management. Uh, you'll see that those things aren't too different 
than uh, stuff that you'll find out in the enter uh, uh, in, in IT. Uh, as a matter of fact, IT is our distant cousin uh, in cyber. And just to follow one path, uh, the way to use this is you come from the center, you pick one of these six places to start off with. And so uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to go down the no code route, which is uh, GRC, which is governance, risk and compliance. Uh, I could even go into security awareness and training, but we're going to go down this path. So when I get here, we'll look at, OK, these are the type of jobs that you would find security policies and procedures risk assessment and management and compliance management, as well as what has to do with uh, or, or how these jobs are, are, uh, are leveraged within the, within the organization. And then if you follow the, follow the flags or follow the arrows, uh, this blue square represents uh, the, the certified or the certification that you'll need to uh, pay in order to obtain that certification and how and how it's relevant so if you get these three certifications you could easily apply for any of these three roles and within a reasonable amount of fairness you'll end up with the job or at least an a interview um, but we all don't have money right so let's move on to free uh, free places where we could go to gain that information and those are what the green pluses are so um, for in this case we have IT governance blog and, and ISACA which is an organization that provides information uh, surrounding GRC um, and we've done this across all of the major uh, places to include uh, places where you can train so with uh, with security awareness and training you can go to cyber and get some training. There's a site called Phishing Frenzy that'll help you uh, understand how to implement this within your organization or your future organization and uh, and the certifications that correlate with those particular type of jobs. So um, this, I, I, I believe that we have the, I'm gonna stop sharing right now. Um, and hold on, let's stop my screen. And this is a, a easy takeaway. I've dropped the link in the chat for uh, for anybody who's attended this uh, this webcast, this panel discussion, to have. Uh, while it doesn't encompass everything in cybersecurity, it's the first of its kind that I've seen where someone can say, "Hey, I want to go in this direction. Here's the certification, and here's some free things that tie into it that will get you started along your way." Yeah, and I'll just do my little shameless plug here real quick. So, like, if you follow a lot of these, like, different training orgs, like, I know SANS will sometimes do, like, diversity scholarships, women, veterans, like, they give, like, those immersion academies, you can get, like, three sets of certifications. The other thing I'll tell you, wait till Black Friday, because I've never seen so many deals on training and tools and all kinds of stuff like I do on, like, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, like I've gotten lifetime access for like 150 bucks to like thousands of dollars worth of training. So pay attention like around Thanksgiving time when your family's on your nerves, go look for free and like affordable training. So. <laughs> I think I got like a, uh, what's that? What's that? Well, what's that platform? I got it for like a dollar. Um, Humble Bundle? No. It was like uh, I'm getting the brain freeze, but it's like you can use it for you can use it for OSINT. I got it for like a dollar. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Are you uh, talking about uh, Showdown? Showdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They run that like five dollar lifetime deal. Like yes, always on Black Friday. I got like eight accounts just because because yes. I'm like it's too cheap. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, I, I guess, uh, Coach, it, is it time for us to wrap up and, and uh, get people to drop their their uh, social medias inside of the inside the chat? So, uh, in case people want to reach out and and contact them, or unfortunately, it is time to wrap up. Um, I have had tons and tons of fun with you, amazing cybersecurity professionals. 
um i really hope to do it again soon with everyone um so yeah let's uh if you, if anyone has any social media you know, linkedin whatever youtube wherever you're at that you'd like people to be able to reach out to you uh go ahead and um share it and um yeah we can go from there and we'll also put the we'll also put all the social media links inside of the description of the video as well so that way you can reach out to these amazing amazing people all right so um you can find me on youtube mine is tech coach ralph you can find me there um and i talk about like i don't specify on uh, cybersecurity. i talk about software engineering qa um devops all type of stuff but we just like we just like to explore software and, and you know try things out and have fun uh anybody else wants to share their social media uh i threw my linkedin in there and i gave you a like and a subscribe ralph so you got a new subscriber out of me friends so thank you appreciate it uh, I, I posted my twitter in there for some reason my, my linkedin is not giving me what i want to see um but you can follow me on linkedin at, at marcus buoy if you want to uh, but I have a YouTube channel where I'll be posting some of my blue team training. Um, I've been I've been busy working on the business side with the contracts, but um, you'll, you'll see some stuff from there soon. Amazing! And uh, hey, Coach, did you drop your uh, did you drop your link inside the chat? <clears throat> working on it now. <laughs> amazing amazing all right so uh again i want to thank uh i want to thank marcus i want to thank ashley uh for taking time out of your very busy schedule to give back to the community to assist the future of um the future of, of cybersecurity as as it's gonna continue growing uh, developing and 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 you all are definitely some of those important people that we should know on our way up and and thank you again uh, and and coach I'm looking forward to working with you a little bit more and uh, refine the process awesome yeah I mean that's that's how software engineering works right you make it work then you make it better so that's what we're gonna do all right so I just want to thank everyone for tuning in um, you know subscribe to the channels we're going to be doing this more um, because, like I said, you guys have questions and we will try to give you answers. All right. So until next time, friends, thanks for tuning in to the Welcome to Cybersecurity panel and we will see you next time.